What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video we're continuing our series on SketchUp extensions for architecture and today we're going to talk about an extension that allows you to add a whole bunch of very helpful selection options inside of SketchUp. So, so far in this series, we've talked about extensions for creating roofs and windows and doors and other architectural things. And I also wanted to cover some different tools and things that can be really helpful for your workflow if you do a lot of work inside of architecture. So if you want to get the whole list, I've created a complete guide of my 20 top extensions for architecture, um, both paid and free that you can download that'll have links to all of these different extensions. So you can download them and give them a look. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions and the link for this extension will be in that guide so let's go ahead and just jump into it so this particular extension is called selection toys it's an extension from TomTom Tom. it's hundred percent free and uh, it basically allows you to adjust and edit your selections inside of your model and so there are a number of different things you can do with this and I always struggle a little bit talking about this extension because it's not when you first look at it it's not as fun to look at as something like a window creation extension or a roof extension, but I would say it's probably a lot more useful. And so basically the way this extension works is it adds a tool set in here that you can use in order to modify and adjust your different selections. And when you first bring this in, this looks a little bit intimidating, but you don't really need to worry about it. It's not as difficult as it looks. And honestly, I really don't use the toolbar all that much, but this extension does install a toolbar here, as well as a number of different options that you'll find in your context menu when you right click. And so one thing that's super helpful when you install this extension is inside of tools, in selection toys, there's actually what's called a cheat sheet, which is a list of what all of the different tools do. So you can open that up and see that like, for example, um, edges will select all the edges in the current selection or faces will select all the faces in the current selection. So this gives you an idea of what all of those little images and icons do as well as what the tools do. And so the way this extension works is it filters your current selection for the most part. You can right click and there's also a selection menu that allows you to select different things like coplanar faces and things like that. But generally speaking, what's gonna happen is, let's say for example, I had hidden geometry in here, you're gonna use this to select stuff and then right click and filter that selection. So for example, I could come in here and tell this to select only my faces inside of the selection. So I could so I could go through, for example, with this sphere and I could right click and I could tell this to select only my edges. And so one of the reasons that this could be important is because right now all of these edges are softened. And uh, let's say that I wanted to create more of a framework of a sphere than an actual uh, full on sphere with the faces. Well, what you could do is you could use this to select the whole thing, right click and do a select only and click on edges and what that's going to do is that's going to filter out everything that isn't an edge and you can see how now with the selected I can uncheck I can uncheck the box for soften and now I could select this again right click and do select only faces and I could delete them out. And what that would allow me to do is that would allow me to create this framework using edges in here. So you can see how I was easily able to filter by edges and then by faces inside of my selection. And so this opens up a whole bunch of interesting possibilities um, because it can also do things like if I select this whole thing and then right click, there's also options for selecting like only your selection border or your border edges. So like for example, this would allow me to select just the border of the shape without selecting anything else. And then I could come in here and I could move this up and down and do a bunch of different things with that. So you can also use this to filter out things like, um, I could come in here and I could right click and I could do a select only and I could select only my softened edges. And you can see how now I can uh, just select these softened edges that are running this way and then I could unsoften them if I wanted to which allows me to do a bunch of different things with the geometry but it just basically gives me the option to select and deselect based solely on what I want to select and deselect by. 
So again, I could select by like my border edges or I could deselect my border edges. I could do a lot of different things with this. I could also, if I wanted to make like a square or something like that, we'd probably need to go to our view toolbar and look at this straight up and down. But I could come in here and I could select this and I could right click and I could select only my selection border and then I could unsoften this and then I could right click again. I guess that was already unsoftened. So I could right click in here and instead of doing select only border edges, I could say deselect border edges or deselect selection border. Then I could right click in here and tell this to select only edges and then I could soften all of those edges in here. And so what that would allow me to do if I turn my hidden geometry off is that allows me to create a different or a uninterrupted face in here that I could then apply materials to or something like that. And so another place where this would get a this could get helpful and these are some rocks I downloaded from the 3D warehouse so these should be the rocks by Edward C. Well one of the things you're going to notice when you bring these in is all of these edges are coming in as unsoftened edges meaning that we do have these rocks in here but they look kind of blocky because all of these edges are lines and what we want instead is we want to select this whole thing if we go inside of this rock we want to right click and we want to do a select only of edges and we want to soften them. So instead of having to go through and select all of those manually, which is what you'd have to do without this tool, you can just soften those using, you can just soften those really quickly by using selection toys filter options. And so you can also use this practically for other things like architectural things. So, and this model is one that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse as well. It's the Art Center designed by Taz 1985. So like for example, let's say that I came in here and I had a bunch of different dimensions and everything's kind of grouped right now, but you can see how I would have to come in here and I would have to do a shift click to select all of these dimensions. Well, practically speaking, what you could do instead, especially if you have a bunch of these, is you could just do a control A to select all and then you could just right click and you could go in here and do a select only of your linear dimensions. So I could select all of those dimensions in here really quickly. And then I could just add a layer for dimensions, drop these on that layer, and now I can turn my dimensions on and off really quickly inside of this model. So there's a lot of practical applications in here as well. So you can do a lot of like right click and you can select like active with same material so if you want to select just a uh, just a certain material in here you can right click and you can do that and so one of the things that can be really helpful is if you get a model like this one where the trees for example aren't modeled as components they're modeled as groups that can be a little bit tricky because you can't actually come in here and edit one and have the others change as well but what you can do is you get this context menu where you can right click on a group and under group copies you can click on the button for select all or select active from the same layer and that's actually going to that's going to select all copies of that group so that's actually actually going to find all of the copies of that tree and you can see how a couple have been modified so it didn't find them but once you do that if you select all the copies of this group you can right click on this group copies with these selected and you can click on the button for convert to component and so what that did is that came in here and let's say I came in here and shrink this a little bit you can see how now all of those trees that we had in here are now components meaning I can come in here and I can make copies of these so instead of you having to come back and either replace those groups or um, do something like that this gives you the ability if you play Place a bunch of copies of a group and you meant for it to be a component to actually convert that into a component. And so another thing I could do is if you have a model like this one that has some group geometry and some raw geometry, a lot of the time you don't want the raw geometry to be in here as raw geometry because what happens is your faces start merging and it becomes kind of a mess. So what you could do is you could select this whole thing like this you could right click on it and you could use the deselect option to remove all groups 
and do deselect again and remove all components, that's going to leave you with the raw geometry inside of your model. Then you could come in here and you could actually right click on this and you could group all of this so you don't have to worry about this merging with the other geometry. So this just gives you a lot of different options for different things you can select and do inside of SketchUp. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you using selection toys? What are some of the things that you use it for? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.